Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Living With Us. I am Sharon Mundia, and we are at Park Inn by Radisson. It's a beautiful morning, and we're about to have a conversation that often is stigmatized, a conversation that we're told quite early, shh, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. But that we've come to learn is not how to go about the conversation of sex, and teen sex to be specific. I've got a man who has been loved for many years. He's been working with the youth for many years. He also, at some point, was my boss. <laughs> ladies and, <laughs> ladies that, and repeat gentlemen, repeat that. Tell him again. he was my boss. <laughs> that is DNG, Yo. who is the founder of 254 Entertainment, yeah. which has a new initiative, which is Punguza Initiative. Um, Welcome. Thank you so boss. much. It's exciting to be here. It's a bit chilly. Yeah, it's a bit chilly. Yeah. But uh, do, do you want to tell them how I was working? Yeah. Do you want to break that down? Yo, uh, we run a company called 254 Digital. And, and before we metamorphosized into a digital PR agency and a creative branding company, we used to uh, have a website that we we're trying to like get off the ground. And we used to do lifestyle, entertainment, really conscious articles. Yeah. And she was our lifestyle and fashion <laughs> Right up. <laughs> I can't believe it. I was there for like a few months. Yeah, I, yeah. I believe. I think the business was pretty unsuccessful then because we didn't, uh, were not able to monetize the website specifically. So thereafter, we had to now rethink our business model and then we, we turned it around and we modeled the business into uh, a creative and uh, digital PR agency. Yeah. But I have to say thank you because that for the period of time where I was working, it did give me some a sense of, um, well, one, financial stability. I appreciated that. And also I got an insight into just coming into the office, getting to have certain, having certain deliverables and the working on the discipline and, the, yeah. and working on things, on articles, lifestyle yeah. articles. So that was good. So thank you. You're welcome. One and I, of my I, I've always <laughs> believed in empowering young people yeah. and, and giving young people an opportunity to find themselves find their nation grow yeah and every time i meet people who used to work for me mm. uh you know in different spheres of life it's very interesting yeah like, so, so have you always been interested in in working with the youth talking to the youth connecting with the youth i believe so because from the onset of of, of my entertainment career which uh, kicked off in the gospel arena yeah. in uh, 2003 i've always focused on youth as my target audience and as my core consumer base yeah uh, therefore, you know, you know, starting with ministry, going to high schools, campuses, prisons, yeah. um, name it, churches, estates, right. door to door, uh, doing evangelism and things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I've always had a soft heart for people, and I've always felt like young young people are marginalized. When right. we talk about marginalized communities, we always think the Turkanas, the Lord was blah blah blah. But no, the young people of this generation are marginalized. We don't have access to opportunities. We don't have access to financing. We don't have access to information. And even what we're talking about Punguza, we don't have access to health services. Mm. You see? So we have real problems that uh, if we don't articulate, the generation that came before us really is not concerned. And because right. if they were, we wouldn't have the problems we have right. today. Yeah. So I'm sure you've spoken to a lot of youth over the years that you've been in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. What are some of the big concerns that have come out of your conversations with them, their frustrations? The core yeah. is unemployment and poverty. Right. Hence why our first initiative that we launched in 2017 was focused on career business and entrepreneurship and just changing mindsets around that. You find that, yes, the job market is pretty saturated. Annually, 800,000 young people leave campuses. And these young people don't have a place to go to because people are not retiring. We have people being re-employed, even in government, <laughs> at the age of 80, 80 plus. Like, those people should be playing with their grandchildren and smoking cigars in the farm. They shouldn't be fighting with you and I for jobs. But we are in a society that really doesn't care about its young people. And so unemployment and poverty is a core. Along the way, we came across very interesting statistics around uh, sexual reproductive health rights and access to health services, uh, things like the, the new HIV AIDS uh, infection rate being 33% among youth. That means that the problem we thought we had dealt with to some extent is seemingly becoming worse and worse. You look at teenage pregnancies, which 33% of those or any un unwanted pregnancies leading to abortions. And we all know that abortion is legal in, illegal in Kenya. And therefore, there are back street abortions taking place every single day for 5 Gs, 10 Gs, they're about, depending on where you go. And many of them lead to death. Right. 
or, or you know, really complicated health problems thereafter. Mm. And these are things we can deal with. Right. For example, like with Punguzo, we're saying um, we need to have the conversation around sex with young people. Right. As you were rightfully saying, it's, it's that stigmatized and demonized convo. Yeah. And young people feel like um, we cannot talk about this because they've been told it's so bad. It's, oh my God, yeah. in, demons. Yeah, and yet <laughs> when the time comes, it's like, where are my grandchildren? Yeah, Where, yeah. Why aren't you married? That's Come it, on, they have it, babies. So it's like at some point, it's the worst it thing. Switches. And then at some point, mm -hmm. you're, you're either not doing it enough or <clears> doing it right or something. And people yeah. are in your business. But why don't you explain, what is Punguza? So Punguza is a youth uh, sensitization and advocacy campaign with a specific focus on, on triggering conversations around sex. Why? Because we are preaching responsibility. Um, we're, we're all about responsible sexual behavior, we're cognizant that young people are having sex randomly and irresponsibly. So that's the thing. So for us, we're not a, an abstinence campaign because we, we are so uh, uh, affirmatively sure that you cannot preach abstinence to a generation that is already sexually active. You understand? Yeah. So what then can we do to solve the problem of HIV, AIDS infections, STIs, and unwanted pregnancies, and so on and so forth? The first thing is to talk about it, then give young people the right information um, that, you know, with that information, then they can make informed choices, knowledgeably that they can, uh, there, there are consequences to every action, and every action has a reaction. And, you know, they need to know that they have choice, they have rights, and they have options that every time they have a sexual encounter, it doesn't have to lead to being pregnant. Right. Because so, they're teenagers yeah. and they can't go to a chemist and ask for a packet of condoms. Yeah. Or they can't afford it. Right. So, so what, to, what constitu constitutes irresponsible sexual behavior? Irresponsible sexual yeah. behavior is, is, is sexual behavior that leads to unwanted uh, results. Okay. You know? Be that pregnancies, yes. STDs, HIV, yes. AIDS. And, and those are things we can tackle. Those are things we can deal with. So for us, we're looking at the consequences that everybody's looking at. Oh, my God, KCSC is coming to, has taken place. Uh, X number of students are doing the paper in, 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 in hospital or could not sit for the exam because they are pregnant. We've been dealing with the symptoms rather than the root cause of this problem. So we came in and we're like, yo, wait a minute. We know how to talk to this, this youth. We've been doing it for corporate brands for the last 12 years, effectively selling products and services. It's about time we switched it up and got involved in social impact because this approach from a boardroom perspective, you know, we design a campaign for young people and we mm. call it to me chill and no one really is chilling. Right. <laughs> but it's a billion shilling project. It's so true. But like, true. can't you rethink? Can't you involve young yeah. people in this conversation yeah. and design something for them that works, yeah. that is practical? That's what we're, we're, we're doing. Yeah. So we've been taking time to just talk to young people, bring them on board, helping us to create this campaign, to execute it. It's by youth for youth. Okay, so, so you're speaking to the youth. Yes. And in doing that, what are some of the key things that you're, your key messages that you're putting out with the campaign? For example, uh, you know, triggering the conversation, telling okay. them that they have the right okay. uh, to talk about it that they have the right to access health centers okay, okay. because there's so much stigma. If, for example, you, you have unprotected sex mm -hmm. because, as I said, you cannot afford a condom mm -hmm. or you don't know about it or you're because too shy right, yeah. to walk into a pharmacy. Right, yeah. So you have unprotected sex and you get an SDI. Yeah. Are you going to tell your mom? Oh. Are you going to tell your dad? So what do you do? So you, 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 right. you, you cannot get the service, you cannot get treatment, yet you have the right yeah. to go to a health facility and say, hey, I'm, I'm unwell. Hook me up with yeah. some tubs, yo. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Right. So we need to break those barriers so that we deal with the issues. So people are, are suffering in silence. Yeah. If you're raped, where do you go? If you've encountered domestic violence, where do you go? Mm -hmm. um, people don't even have the right information about contraceptives or cannot afford them. So I'm, I, you know, we've also been doing stakeholder engagement. And I, I sit in boardrooms and I, I ask health providers, like, why can't we do clinics where we have a free uh, distribution of these contraceptives to youth. Do you know that discounted contraceptives are as low as 50 shillings? So like why, for the injection, a yeah. three, six month, yeah. uh, one year yeah, injection, yeah. Yeah. you can get it. But we need to have these conversations with, with the corporate players who, you know, it's their business to provide. So, yeah. so as, as a sensitization and advocacy campaign, that's what we're doing. So we did uh, our first event at uh, uh, Gendurai 44 for the International Youth Day. And we, we partnered with an organization called Youth to Youth Nairobi. And we, you know, we set up different tents for different things. You can get your testing if, if you, know, you get your results spot on. 
After that, you can go for screening for even cancer. Mm. You can do, you can get your contraceptives free from condoms. Mm. If you want tapako shika ukai nayo kwa nyumba jipange. Uh, if you want, uh, you know, the others' implants, we direct them to the nearest facility, things like that. So it's, it's about creating forums for young people to feel safe to come, learn, get the right information and yeah. engage. Yeah. So from your conversations, if they are not having these talks with their parents, where are they going to get this information? They're having the, these conversations with their peers. And most of the times, it's broken telephone. Remember when we were younger? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, I hear something, I, uh, by the time it gets around this, this, this area, it's, yeah. it's the wrong it's not, message. It's not what it, so, yeah, you know, people, there are so many myths and misconceptions. Like, I remember when I was young, um, one of my, my friends got, uh, got a, a girl impregnated in our estate, yeah. like, directly opposite our house. Mm. And so that guy, you know, is in so much drama. So we're like, why, why did you use a condom? I mean, it's like, but the chick is a virgin. So in his mind, oh. a virgin cannot get pregnant. That's a misconception. Wow, so he was yeah. told that by somebody yeah. and somebody, you know, and it kept going around. Right. So the next thing, he's in Kisumu, Mitini, Mteja, yeah. causes him issues, yeah. man. Do you think the internet plays a big role also in the, in the conversations that are going around? For sure. And... Don't forget that young people, remember when you were youth. Mm. Remember when you were young and going through adolescence and puberty. You didn't really understand your body, mm. but it was leading you to either this direction or that direction, right? So you start getting inquisitive and experimental. You know, you, your friends are talking about it. You know, you want to find out about it. So you Google how mm. to, how to, how to. I sit with, with adults and they have children and they're like, I found my son Googling how to have a fast kiss. And the <laughs> mom is so pissed off and crazy and she's going through so much. And I'm like, <laughs> like, so I remind them because they're my, oh my friends. Gosh, and some of them yeah. are even my clients. And we yeah. sit down and I'm like, I'm like, what about you when you are? 12. Yeah. Or, In fact, we or, didn't back then. There was no Google. So how did how did you? You do watch it? movies. Movies or books. And yeah. You were like, and we had games like Kiss Commander Promise. What? You didn't have those oh games. Oh my God! There, yes. You remember? Wait, how did it so, go again? Let's let's Kiss take Command, it back. Kiss Commander. Kiss Commander Promise was Kiss uh, Command. Or yeah. You had so to like kiss you had to put your fingers like this, like a pax, right? Yeah. 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 So if they find you without. A pack, so you're yeah, like, it's or a hands, command or yeah, promise. so I you choose. You either kiss someone, I command you to, to do, do something, something or, or you make a promise <gasps> to do something. And I that's how people started experimenting. That. So you find people kissing behind the, the bookshelf in school. Wow, wow, wow. Let me tell you, I really <laughs> or in the estate, you know, and and that's those, that's the same stage in life that our youth are in today. Yeah, but only we, they have the internet and, and, a, and yeah. a wealth of and information. And a mobile phone. There's nothing and, as yeah. powerful as a mobile phone. Yeah, and so whereas we had Kiss Commander from it and we, had, we were trying to figure out it that was manual. crap behind. <laughs> the, yeah, <laughs> then they have access to, I mean, and, and pornography is yeah, this close. Yeah. As I was trying to research uh, for, the this most, show, mm -hmm. for this show, I just, very innocently, I just, I just typed in sex teen, or teen, no, teen sex. Because I just wanted to find out more statistics and Took understand. Took you to a website. And I was like, this is not what <laughs> I was going for. Is, and also, yeah. why are we... It's like, easily it, it accessible really, it and so it's free. It was so shocking just how much, yeah, was on there. And nowadays, you know, most of the houses, schools and all that have Wi-Fi. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah. So if you have a mobile phone and you have Wi-Fi, yeah. surely, what else do you need? Right. So you get this information at a very young age. Yeah. In fact, the really crazy statistics show that the first sexual contact documented from a pregnancy perspective is nine years old. A For nine year sexual yes, contact, yes. nine years old. Nine years old is somebody perhaps in standard three. Standard three, that's not even upper primary. Like that's, you know, that's really that's, yeah. young. And if they're pregnant, and I'm not talking about rape or defilement right, or all right, those, right, those right. other crazy things. I'm talking about like yeah. peer to peer. Yeah. Like a, a nine year old and another nine year old in the estate or in the school hooked up. So we can either sit back and pretend like it ain't happening. Like yeah. our society is a very pretentious oh, yeah. society. Hypocritical. Hypocritical yeah. to, the, to the letter. So we can either pretend like, yeah, our young people are not godly being rich, they're godly, they're and we are a Christian yeah. country. Yeah. Where we are, seven, is it about 70% Christian? Uh, yeah. Though, oh, yeah, I'm you know. Sure. <laughs> and we're so religious, and we go to Sunday school, and we're in youth ministry and all that. But no. Yeah. Or we can deal with it. And, and just give people access to information access to services and give them choice right the right, right choice it's heavy right yeah it's oh it's heavy and i do want us to get into how we involve the parents if yeah. we should involve the parents we should, we should we should um but we've got to take a break first uh we'll be back in a moment 
Welcome back, everybody. We're at Park Inn by Radisson, and I've got DNG, who founded the Punguza Initiative, meant to stir the conversation around sex um, and responsible sex and sexual behavior amongst young, the youth. So before the break, we were talking about, well, first of all, we were talking about Kiss Commander Promise, which I completely forgot, which was uh, like our version of like Two testing the waters and figuring out like, yeah. Ooh, what's that? But now things have changed so much. Do you think parents should be involved in the conversation? In the, you know, the parent conversation? Great question. I think 100% parents should be involved. Uh, but parents, you know, as I in denial that their young people are even capable of it. Mm. You see, if you're a parent, you don't want to look at your child like that. Mm. You know, you want to look at your child like this, that, oh, coochie, coochie, yeah, uh, cuddly, baby. innocent baby that I give birth to and I raise and I pay fees for, blah, blah, blah. And you don't even want to imagine, like, this person, this little person can do that. So it's a very hard uh, um, conversation to have as a parent. I can concur to that. And, uh, you know, I'm not one of those people who just shift all the blame to us. Parents need to take care of their children. Parents or, or teachers. I think even the community or, or even external people like, like we, the media or influencers, have a role to play in shaping society and sh shaping mindsets. So I think it's a collective effort. So how would you advise for parents to approach this conversation? Is there a right time, right language, I, you know? Experts say that the earlier the better. Okay. Before they get the information from peers who will mislead them, yeah. you need to have that conversation with them. But remember, parents will always tell their kids, do not. Mm. It's always do not, or it's wrong, or it's ungodly, or you know, if you love Jesus, <laughs> you go to hell. Yeah. Yeah, I remember like for me, it was, if you hang out with girls, you're, going, you're not going to go to university. Stop. Yeah. It was a yeah, girls are bad. You hang out with girls. Masomo, utashindwa kusoma, <laughs> eh? Utakuwa wow. unaranda randa mitani. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> so if you hang out with girls. Yeah, so you start hanging it. out with girls and you're like, hey, wait a minute. But with, yeah. Girls ain't bad. Yeah. <laughs> girls are easy. Yeah. So we, we, even as parents, man, we feed our kids the wrong information. We feed our kids lies. Total lies. Mm. On the real man. Just think about how your parents told you about sex. How was it? Oh no, you? there was no conversation about sex. At all. There was no conversation. See, for us, even it was just girls are bad, boys are bad. Yeah. Just focus on. Yeah, school, school, school. Yeah. school. But life is not about school. Yeah. Life is about balance. Right. You understand? Right. So we teach our children the wrong things, and they realize that our folks were daft, <coughs> and we couldn't. And then we stop relating with our parents because they're like, "Hey, Mzali need cheat." I think that can Yeah. So. I think we, we, we need to look at it very differently. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you think the conversation around sex is or should be uh, related to the conversation around alcohol and drug, drug use? Do you think the two are linked? That the reason why perhaps a lot of youth are more experimental, curious, or starting to have sex quite early is because of access to drugs and alcohol? Well, I think drugs and alcohol have always been a thing. I think all generations have gone through this curiosity phase of, of yo, I want to drink because my dad told me not to drink. Or I want to smoke a cigarette because mom doesn't like cigarettes. You know, we've, like, I think we, we need to go back into our minds and remember how it was when we were young. You understand? Like, we started smoking early. L you know, when someone's dad in the estate would leave, uh, have a cigarette, I'm a tupa. We would end on a vuta. At least for us, that's in our estate, that's how we started smoking. Um, along the way, you realize, is it, is it your thing or it's not your thing? And yeah. you decide later. But like the experimental phase starts then. Right. You know, kids are inquisitive. Like, don't, don't look at this, let's see, kids or teens in the, in the crib and you're like, these ones are not capable of this. They're capable of anything, yeah. man. So do you think that as you're having a conversation about sex, that it's also important to talk about alcohol I think and, responsibility and, or, you're right it's, yeah. it's a cross board right it's just being responsible with money um, drugs uh, because they're not going to stop I think we we need to accept the reality that young people are not going to stop having sex or drinking alcohol or smoking blunts mm. they are going to continue so how can you offer guidance as think of it like this is your you're a big sister or a big bro right. you find your your like my, my, one of my boys found his small bro with a packet of condoms. Mm. Hmm? I guess I think it started at eight. So he's like, hey, 
and um to him dogo hivi ashaanza kukula madem so that's his convo in his head but i'm like this is an opportunity for you to give your your small bro guidance. Right. Do spatiane mimba usianze kumchakashif kwa nini umempata na CD. Right. But I can understand why it would be so terrifying it's such a daunting and terrifying mm-hmm. thought for a parent to think they're definitely going to be having sex, drinking alcohol and yeah. drugs which even as an adult mm. I do think that a combination of alcohol and sex can often lead you down a path that if you were not if you're not drinking or if you're in, in your sober mind you'd be like I don't know if that's the decision I'd have made yeah, but as you see, an like, adult so as a it's pleasure this is child. pleasure yeah so when you combine alcohol sex drugs it's, it's even height it's heightened as you were saying yeah. so, so the power of say 100 so it's more fun to do it when you're drunk why as you say you can deny responsibility you can say yeah, I was drunk so that's why I gave it up you know that's what most chicks say <laughs> right No. Sharon is like, oh my god, no. I can't relate. No, no, no. Maybe then you're a I nice if, girl who no, no, did this no. thing. No, 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 it's not about that. I just don't know if that's what <laughs> girls say that I was drunk. Many girls say they were drunk, that's why they did it. I, okay. I mean, well... We, maybe we're in different forms. Yeah. Let me tell you another conversation I was having with a teenager. Now, this, this, this girl tells me, uh, so we have the Punguza page, eh? very active, very, very, very safe. Because uh, some of these conversations, we do not re- re- share them. So it's a safe space for young people to come and talk. And she was in trouble with her mom because her mom found her with a packet of P2, Postinol, okay. right? Which is the most commonly used contraceptive. Yet it's, it's an emergency contraceptive, right? Um, so there we have it. The mom finds her with, with the P2 and she goes off. Like, oh my God, takes her phone, <laughs> time out, yeah, yeah. takes all this. So later she's telling us this conversation on the platform. Yeah. And so the question is, as a parent, you find your daughter with, with P2 pills, should you be pissed at her or should you be excited that she is being responsible? Right. Or at least use it as an, as an opening to have that conversation uh-huh. and be like, what else are you curious yeah. about? Can we, you see. this is a safe space. But I think back to the alcohol, I think, I don't know if it's just a girl's thing. That's why I hesitated. I think even guys, and at least yeah. in my experience, I know a lot of, and it's not when you're moral, younger moral, that's what moral. gives you that kind of like mask yeah that kind of oh I've got, I've got this um but i guess what i was even saying is i can see how it would be such a terrifying conversation to have for any parent mm. but i don't think it means don't have it because yeah. it's it's and and you know what i'd say for parents you can also rope in like another auntie or uncle who's cool right you know that every family has a cool uncle cool auntie with yeah. vibes man yeah like yeah. a lot of times i'd be called into mentor my younger cousins right. or my my friends children because i'm in their space so like one of my clients had this kid who was like he wanted to be a dj he put dreadlocks he did everything i did when i was that age so the, my client was like oh my god you have to come talk to my son so i did and we'd hang out i'm like yo what's the issue is like yo i just want to so i i kept telling him i'm like this guy just wants to follow his dream you want him to go to school study some different he doesn't want it so if you continue doing this with your child it will break. it will break right so it's and i left it to her to make her choice the next thing i know yeah then i say and and all that so it's beautiful mm-hmm. uh so i i challenge parents if you can't if you don't have the guts to talk to your child directly bring another person another party right. don't bring the pastor or the sheikh yeah. bring a, 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 somebody who can relate because this yeah. is all about relation oh, re- relate, i 100% agree with yeah. that because i think often religion I, it's religion not, talks it, at the youth. Yeah, it's not, it's not the, the space to abst- have honest. The Bible says abstain and still marriage. How do many people do you know who have ever abstained in marriage? I know a few, <laughs> actually. But it's not the... It's most of the people I know have Maybe not. Maybe like 0.00001% like yeah. yeah. of human beings. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, DNG, how can people be a part of this initiative? How can people participate? Several ways. I think, first and foremost, like our page. Uh, we're on all social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, the handle is Punguza K-E. At Punguza K-E. Look at what we're about. Learn, like, engage in a conversation. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me about how can we volunteer. Um, it's very interesting that, you know, uh, you know people want to give their time, which is brilliant. So feel free to hit us up. Hit, use, use the inboxes. Uh, on, the, on the different pages, we have our details, like telephone numbers for the office, email addresses. You know, all the information is there. Just go to our page and, and check it out. Write to us. Let us know. Uh, for those who have, like, events, 
that they want us to plug into as we you know we're more than willing we're trying to get into high schools campuses um, what we call town halls because there are people who are not in any institution but to kukwenye bezma ze tunashikisha tunapeleka na ria tunata kukamta eno so we've already started and, and I, for us, we're even seeing more impact in the hood. Because wow, yeah. guys are available, they're chilling. Yeah. All we need is set up some cool music, vibes, and, you know, it draws Get numbers. Get the conversation going. Yeah. All right. And I think also to challenge, like, the corporate brands and, 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 and uh, the NGOs and donor partners, you know, plug in, give us the support we need. We, need, we cannot do this alone. It's not a DNG journey or Punguza journey. It's, it's a collective effort between us and all stakeholders who are willing or like-minded organizations and individuals who are willing right. to walk this journey. Together. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming, for sharing, and for having a conversation that's sometimes uncomfortable, but very important to have, because it's happening. And sticking our heads in the sand as if it's not, it's not happening. It's making it worse. Yeah, it's making it worse. All right. Thanks so much, DNG. We've got to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about a hashtag that's been going around. That's sex consent age KE. We'll be back in a moment.